So this is the first in a series of marketing videos I'm putting together for free. I, there shouldn't be any branding in here, which is sort of like paid for towards me. There shouldn't be any sort of endorsements. Everything I'm saying is as factual information. If I link to a video, if I link to something else, it won't be me making a kickback. It's just going to be that this is a good resource. Have a look at it. Give it a go. Hopefully it's of use to you. Now, some of the videos I might link to you might be from F-Stoppers, might be from the uh, Chase Jarvis Creative Project, whatever they may be. Yes, I work for some of these people some of the time, but I won't be getting paid by them. They've not asked me to do this. This is all just my opinions and what I think makes a good photography business. Now, we're going to start from the very beginning. Maybe you're a few years into your photography career. If you are, try and forget everything you're doing and just see this with a fresh pair of eyes. And we're going to start with the first point, which is naming your company. Now, for me personally, I have two brands. I have Tin House Photography and Tin House Studios, which is like an umbrella brand where we have the studio rental, the camera rental. We have things like the food photography backgrounds, things which are generic and don't necessarily require me to be there. Then we have Scott Chathaniel. And this is where I'm turning up. This is my photography through my agent. This is where we're doing creative work, ad campaigns, talks, presentations, anything which is where the customer is paying for me to do the work. For example, if you've got a wedding photography business, if in the future you plan to have four wedding photographers and teams shooting at four different locations on the same day, you need to use a branding name. It makes more sense. Something creative weddings, for example. If, however, it is you turning up to every single job and it is your work, your vision, you should trade under your name. It gives the customer the feel that they're getting some sort of bespoke, high-end personal touch rather than some sort of generic thing. And neither's right or wrong. I do both. But it's important that you set your stall out correctly. Don't call yourself something creative if I'm trying to think of a brand name, but I can only think of my mate's company name. I don't want to slam him under the bus here. But don't come up with tripod creatives, for example, if you're a landscape photographer selling fine art prints. Just call yourself who you are. And that really just brings us through to the next point, which is who are you? What is it you do? Why is it you do what you do? If you are a generic photographer who does a bit of this, a bit of that, you do some landscapes, you do some architecture, you do some portraits, you do weddings at the weekend, all these different things, maybe a company name is a good idea for now until you decide who it is that you are and what it is that you're trying to put out there. If, for example, you know that you work in still life, you work with graphic concepts and you work in a particular style, all your images have a particular lighting like aesthetic to them. They all go through a particular composition where it's clearly your work. You should be using your name. Now, there's far more money in that sort of work, but it's far more competitive. There's far less money in the other, but there's probably as much competition, but there's more work in general. So you need to decide who it is that you are. So for me personally, I'm a food photographer. Now, my work is actually changing at the moment. It's going through a bit of a natural sort of ebb and flow as it does. I was enjoying making these huge, complicated flat lays for a long time, but they've been done to death. So I've gone in for a more graphic and pop art style of work at the moment. If you're on my Instagram, I'll pop a link in the description. You'll see that the style of work that I'm reproducing and, you know, trying to put out there is very different to what it was a year ago. And I've really like gone down a rabbit hole for this. And for me, it has to have my name to that because this is who I am. This is what I think looks visually pleasing right now. Yes, it might change in 10 years time, but for the moment, it's graphic, it's repetitive, it's hard light, it's very minimal lighting, but well done. So in the past, I might have used seven, eight lights. Now I'm using one light, but I'm really sculpting it. So there's a big change in my particular persona as who I am as a photographer. So this way, when it comes to somebody wanting to hire somebody for an ad campaign where they need something graphic, very sort of pop arty or very just bold and, you know, really in there with the food stuff, they'll come to me now once they've seen my portfolio. They won't go to somebody who's shooting 45 degree bistro style or, you know, the sort of very F1.2 dreamy stuff, because I feel like that's saturated now and I'm just getting bored of it. So I moved to something else. But if they want that, they're not going to come to me because my vision, who I am, has changed and that's not what they want anymore. And that's fine. Everyone has their place. There's plenty of work for everyone at each level. You just need to make it clear to people who you are. If you're not getting work, it's because people don't know why they'd book you. There needs to be a clear, sort of concise, this person does this, we'll book them. If I needed to book a assistant, I'm not gonna book a generic assistant when I need somebody who can specifically do a task. If I need to book a retoucher, I'll book a retoucher who has a very specific skill set. If I need a producer, I'll book the right producer for the right shoot. 
it's not as simple as just going, this person does photography, let's bring them along. Yes, last week I shot, and not last week, it's a month ago, I shot it last week in the video, but I shot a bike race. I did a good job, it was okay. But the only reason I got booked for that was because I knew the person. And yes, of course I say yes because I wanted to do it, and if it was big money, I'd have said yes to it even if I didn't want to do it. But if it was a huge bike brand like Rafa, they wouldn't book me because I can shoot a bike race. They'd book me if it was all I did and exactly what I knew everything about. And it was my persona, my personality, my entire life was put into photographing a bike race. So if you sat there going, I'm getting no work, you're probably spreading yourself too thin across too many genres. And even once you find your genre, you need to dig down into it and go, this is how I think this genre should look. Now, the next thing you need to be thinking about when coming up with your branding is who are you for? Whose problem are you solving? If you're an event photographer and you can do instant turnaround to a live VPN sort of, I don't know what these terms mean. You know what I mean, an uploady cloudy doodah thing. If you can do that, then you can get it so they can have it straight on the social media, or you've got someone in the background who's got the script for the social media and all the hashtags they need, and you can upload it instantly. There's clearly a client for you. If you turn up and shoot an event, charge 300 quid, deliver them two days later, you're competing against a lot of muddy water. So you need to work out who is your client and what is their problem? How do you solve it? For me, it's big brands who need advertising campaign shot to brief, to budget, and with my specific style. Now, I have extra stuff that I can offer. I have my own prop house, my own background company. I have my own cameras, which sounds daft, but at the higher ends, a lot of people don't own cameras. I have my own studio with 24 seven access. I also live with a food stylist, which right now, whilst everyone's on lockdown, is a real bonus. If you cannot, in a sentence or two, put down what problem you solve for your ideal client, your business is not yet fully formed. And that is fine. It takes time. I didn't even know food photography existed in the level I do attack until seven years into doing photography. So, it, but it's something you should be aware of. I've always had a document going, this is who I am. This is who I'm for, and this is the problem that I solve for them. And I change it every time I update my portfolio. And we'll be getting into all of that in the future. Portfolios, pricing, marketing. I'm gonna show exactly what I write in an email. I'm gonna show exactly how I do a phone call. I was hopefully gonna do a live phone call when I had this idea originally, but then obviously with lockdown, no one wants to be phoned at home in their pajamas with me doing a sales pitch at them. So this is the beginning. Now you're probably thinking, right, I've got my brand name now, or I'm using my own name, I need my logo. Don't overthink the logo. I recently had some business cards made for a meeting I went to. I haven't had business cards for six years. And to be honest, they're hidden back there, so I was gonna make them appear out of nowhere. I'm probably gonna lose them before I use them again. Don't worry too much about the logo. It's not important. What is important is your imagery. Your logo should not be more recognizable than your work. People should look at your work, and it's not anybody from the general public, you're probably not famous but people should be able to look at your work in your genre and go, that was shot by that photographer. I can tell because of X, Y, and Z. Now, I'm pretty sure there's no one in my area who shoots food like I do. So if anyone saw my food work in photography, interested in food, they'd know it was mine. On a national scale, there'd be a reasonable percentage of people who needed my services who'd go, that's one of Scott's images. Globally, meh, not so much. But hopefully over time, when I keep drilling this home via Instagram, via my website, via all the other marketing tricks I'm gonna show you in future videos, so do hit subscribe, shameless plug, it should be okay. And people will know who I am. And it does take time. I've been doing this professionally for a decade. And before that, I did it as a hobby. Doing this takes time, commitment, and perseverance. So if you are looking to learn more about this, I'm gonna go through it week on week, so you've got time to work on it and you know, put together what you need. Do join my Facebook groups, you can ask questions in there as well. Do subscribe so you get the next video sent to you. I think that's how it works. I think you need to hit a notification button as well. Not very tech savvy. But hopefully this is of use to you. And going forward, we can all learn and progress together. So at least, if nothing else, we feel a little bit positive whilst we're on lockdown. And best case scenario, when we come out the other side, we might all have new businesses that we can get going and just get moving with straight away.